If you start looking at lists of the most difficult games of all time, one name is brought up again and again. Ninja Gaiden. Everyone I knew seemed to own this game, but nobody could beat it. Even Game Genie didn't help. It would be fair to call it the Dark Souls of the 1980s. Beyond its reputation for brutal difficulty, Ninja Gaiden is notable for revolutionizing the way video games told a story. Before Ninja Gaiden, some games definitely tried to tell interesting stories, but these were mostly conveyed through blocks of text as characters spoke to each other. And many games didn't even go that far. If you wanted to know what was going on in most early NES titles, you usually had to read the instruction manual. Unlike those earlier games, Ninja Gaiden tells a story through action-filled cutscenes. These anime-inspired visuals may not seem like a big deal today, but in 1989, they were mind-blowing. Tecmo, the developer that brought us games like Fire and Ice, the Dead or Alive series, and of course, Tecmo Super Bowl, was the studio behind Ninja Gaiden. They decided to double down on ninjas and also released an arcade game with the same title just a few months before the NES release. Interestingly, the arcade version is very different from what we got on home consoles. Although when Jimmy plays the arcade version of Ninja Gaiden in The Wizard, he's definitely playing the NES version. So he can play Ninja Gaiden, so what? But the entire movie is a commercial for Nintendo products, so what did you expect? In Japan, the game is called Ninja Ryukenden, which literally translates to Ninja, Legend of the Dragon Sword. For the North American release, they called it Ninja Gaiden, which was the game's original working title. Rumor has it they chose the name simply because they thought it sounded cool. Gaiden actually means side story, which doesn't make a lot of sense. If this is just the side story, then the main story must be insane. In Europe they had to call it Shadow Warriors, because the illicit ninja arts had been explicitly banned in several European countries. The story was both written and illustrated by Masato Kato, credited as Ranmaru in the game's ending. If you've never heard of Kato, you've probably seen his later works. He eventually left Tecmo and joined Squaresoft, where he worked on the story for a few little projects, like Chrono Trigger for the Super Nintendo and Final Fantasy VII, among others. Kato's story opens with two ninjas dueling in front of a full moon. One is mortally wounded. He's the father of our hero, Ryu Hayabusa. Ryu receives a letter the next day. It tells him of his father's fate and instructs him to find an archaeologist named Walter Smith. It's time for some ninja vengeance. Ryu begins his fight out on the mean streets. The gameplay is similar to Konami's Castlevania. You attack with a sword instead of a whip, but you have a similar system of sub-weapons that are found in candles or lanterns that can be used by attacking while pressing up. Even the health display at the top of the screen is surprisingly similar, but if you're going to copy anything, Castlevania is one of the best. Unlike Simon Belmont, Ryu can stick to walls, which gives the game its unique feel. He also moves way faster, which is complemented by the game's absolutely perfect controls. Ninja Gaiden is broken up into six acts, each concluding with an epic boss battle. These guys range from breezy to brutal, but the finale takes it to another level. Not only do you have to fight not one, not two, but three final bosses, if you die, you're sent all the way back to the beginning of the final act. 
Normally, you'd go back to the sub-level you were last playing, even if you lose all of your lives and have to continue. If you lose just a single life on any one of the game's three hardest bosses, the game penalizes you by forcing you to repeat the entire ultra-difficult final act. It's extremely demoralizing. Despite its intense difficulty, Ninja Gaiden was extremely popular. The game spawned two sequels on the NES, and the original trilogy was even re-released on the Super Nintendo. That version looks nice, but unfortunately has an awkward control scheme. I recommend sticking with the original versions. Many years later, Tecmo's Team Ninja reimagined Ninja Gaiden as a 3D game for the Xbox. The gameplay style may have changed, but the core difficulty remained true to the series. The game is still well regarded today. On IGN's Top 100 NES Games of All Time, they rated Ninja Gaiden number 17. On the crowdsourced rating site Ranker.com, Ninja Gaiden was ranked the 10th best NES game of all time. Current gamers can find Ninja Gaiden on the NES Classic Mini and the Switch's online service. There's even a PC Engine version included with the TurboGrafx-16 Mini. That version is similar, but definitely not the same. In my opinion, the Turbo Graphics version is even harder. Modern gamers will still need to compete with the challenges the NES is notorious for. Many of the enemies spawn continuously in very awkward positions, and getting hit triggers knockback that inevitably drops you into an instant death pit. But what if I told you how to find and wield the most powerful of Ryu's Nimpo magics? What if I told you how to conquer all six of the game's acts? And what if I told you multiple strategies for defeating every boss, even the final three? On today's episode of You Can Beat Video Games, we'll learn all of that and more. If you're new to the channel, we're doing deep dives on retro video games and giving you the professional strategies that can be used by the casual gamer. Please make sure to subscribe and click on the bell for notifications so you don't miss any new videos. Let's get started. Alright, Ninja Gaiden. We start out in Act 1, which is called Destiny, on the mean streets. You'll notice right away that our hero, Ryu Hayabusa, can easily kill enemies just by hitting them one time with his sword. If you go backwards, you'll see that they start to respawn, so most of the time we need to be moving forwards in this game, and try not to go backwards too much. You will attack these lanterns that you see in the sky, and they'll drop some power-ups for you. Right now we have one special weapon, the shurikens. If you find the blue or orange icons, those will give us more energy, or nimpo magic, to be able to charge our super moves. So that was one of them there, that was a fiver. This weapon that I just picked up, the spin slash, is the most powerful attack in the game. And you'll see these fighter enemies in front of us. Whenever you are in the air and you press the attack button, you will activate the spin slash automatically. Now, if you press down while you're in the air and attacking, you'll be able to attack as normal with your sword, which is very important because the spin slash takes five Ninpo magic points to use. And if we spend all of our Ninpo every time we jump and attack to try to attack one of the lanterns to get a power up, that's not going to be very efficient. Let me show you what the Spin Slash can do on the first boss here, the Barbarian. So just jump and attack and jump and spin attack, and you'll defeat him very, very easily. What if you don't have the Spin Slash when you get this far? This boss is actually not that tough. 
this guy doesn't have a lot of range, so I just walk up to this first piece of garbage and start smashing them. Just mash the buttons and back up a little bit whenever he moves forward and you'll take him out super easily. That boss is the first member of the Malice 4 that we will fight in the game. And the instruction manual makes a big deal out of this guy, like he's somebody that we should be terribly afraid of. They call him the Executioner of South America. Well, in any case, we are here in our first movie. We see that Ryu has a bit of a misogynistic attitude, and that's about to catch up to him in 3, 2, now. Yep. Should have expected someone that was able to follow you might have been packing heat. Nice work, Ryu. Now you're shot. We wake up in this jail cell, so I guess we don't die from being shot in this game. Although to be fair, there are enemies in this game that have shot me point blank with a bazooka, and I immediately came back and stabbed them to death. I do have a health bar, and maybe this woman knew that about me. So I can take a couple bullets before I go down, and heck, even if I do die, I can come back as long as I have more lives. And the continues are even unlimited. It looks like there's no time to explain, and it doesn't seem like this woman is going to tell us, but she did give us a strange statue. So it's time for Act 2, The Escape. Now, Act 1 was very easy because there weren't any pits for us to fall into, but that is not the case here in Act 2. Uh, at the beginning of Act 2 here, you'll notice that we can grab a bunch of Ninpo power-ups and then grab the Art of the Firewheel magic. After that, I grabbed the Windmill Star. That's a pretty useful item here. It takes 5 Ninpo to activate, and it's a lot like the shurikens, except that it boomerangs. Now, a lot of people like to call this item the Swag Star because of the fun things you can do with it. If you shoot it out and then jump over it after it boomerangs, well, then you can keep it going for a long time. Up here, I grab the Spin Slash, and once we have the Spin Slash, we want to keep it and not get any different sub-weapons. So the key here is to be careful now about which candles we attack so that we can maintain the spin slash. And also remember that when we're attacking in the air and we don't want to use the spin slash, we need to hold down when we attack to do that slash cancel. This here is an item that just gives you points, so we don't need that. Here's another one of those. That's the star there, so if you have the spin slash, you'll want to avoid that windmill star. This one's a 5 Nimpo, so use the slash cancel to grab it. And we're on to stage 2-2. So there's going to be a banshee enemy here. Make sure to attack it from the pillar on the right before you jump over to the left. Same thing with this gunner. Let him shoot and then jump up and attack him. There's going to be another gunner down here. Make sure to attack him before he has a chance to shoot at you. You don't want that shuriken if you have the spin slash, but make sure to grab the 10 Nimpo before you head down the ladder. Once you're at the bottom, make your way to the left. Watch out for a bat, though, that's going to come across. Jump over and be very careful of these soldiers. I grabbed this invincibility fire wheel here, which is very helpful for getting through this part, and we're not worried that we lost the spin slash because there's going to be another spin slash that we'll find right up here. Head to the top of this ladder and go to the left. Watch out for the bat as you jump across and wait for this guy to start moving to the left before you head over here. Also take out this banshee before you jump up to the next platform and here's that spin slash. So now it should be easy. Jump down here, spin slash this guy. Grab the 10 Nimpo. Do not attack that dragonfly there. That's art of the fire wheel. We don't want it. Grab this two Nimpo and then just spin slash this guy. Spin slash the next guy. Make our way to the left. Wait for this guy to start backing to the left before you head over. And we are into the boss room. Bomber head. Now if you have the spin slash, bam. Bomber head is super easy. But what if you don't have the spin slash? Without the spin slash, bomber head is still pretty easy. 
you're just going to hit him at range, sort of like we fought the Barbarian in the first one. He likes to stop and he'll give you a second to get a couple swings in. But when he gets close to the wall, we need to climb up the wall and then jump over his head. And then we can start attacking him as he walks back. Do the same thing at the other end. I wasn't high up enough on the wall that time, but it's no big deal. We were able to take him out, no problem. And he was the second of the Malice Four that we had to fight. There will be two more before the game is over. What is this bizarre statue? And who was that woman? Well, it looks like the only way we're going to get answers to our questions is to meet up with that guy, Walter Smith. It's time for Act 3, The Chase. So it's at this point Walter Smith reveals to us that our father's name is Ken. Ken and Ryu. The original Street Fighter actually came out in 1987, so it's very possible that the people who designed Ninja Gaiden could have played that and had been inspired by those characters. I have no idea if there's actually a link to Ninja Gaiden and Street Fighter. The story does take an interesting turn at this point. It sort of gets a little bit Indiana Jones-ish. It's like there's this ancient artifact. The statue that Ryu has is one of a pair. And without the other statue, they won't be able to combine and create some kind of demon, giving the person that releases it infinite power, blah, blah, blah. But then here they start to mention Shinobi, which is a totally different game franchise. Sometimes I wonder if Ninja Gaiden is the side story, is Shinobi the main story? Well, in any case, we're not going to be able to get all of those questions answered right now because this meeting is about to be interrupted. Yeah, maybe they should be a little bit more careful with their demon releasing statues. Just kind of leave it sitting around. And here we go, we're back to the game. Act 3 is way different from all of the other acts because there are no spin slashes to find in this act. You can grab a time stopper there to take out that bird enemy, and there's a shuriken you can grab, and there's also windmill stars and art of the fire wheel, all that good stuff. But there will not be a spin slash to help us take out the boss this time. Oh, and also this is where the game introduces the bird enemies, and these birds are relentless. Your best bet against them is to duck as it goes over your head, and then if it comes back at you, turn around and attack it from a crouching position. Do not mess around with the birds. Up here we'll see these bazooka soldiers. As soon as they pop onto the screen, you want to run right at them and attack so that you can kill them before they get to shoot at you. Take out this banshee up here, and wait for these guys to move so you can drop in between them and grab a 10 Nimpo. Then duck under a bird here and just walk off the edge to the right, wait for this guy to shoot, and walk off the edge again. And here is where we can find the art of the fire wheel, which is the preferred weapon for fighting the boss here. Drop down here and let this soldier jump over your head, climb up the ladder, and I took out that knife man with the art of the fire wheel so you can see what it does. Take out this bazooka soldier. Watch out, there's another bird here. Very dangerous. That one's points, but the next bird we don't want to... The bird icon in the sky. We don't want to kill because that is the star. Now this tiger will keep respawning, so you're going to need to jump over him and wait for that guy at the bottom to be walking to the right. 
so you can jump down and head to the boss. The boss, Bassa Quir, just jumps back and forth across the screen and occasionally will shoot bullets at you. If you have the Art of the Fire Wheel and a lot of Nimpo magics, if you can hit him at just the right angle, right there was a good shot, you can hit him for 3 damage each time. Now, if you don't have the Art of the Fire Wheel, hopefully you have the Windmill Star. Whenever he shoots at you, you can use the Windmill Star to counter the shots. So attack him when he jumps near you, shoot a star out whenever you see those bullets appear on the screen, and that is another way that you can beat this guy, but you'll take him out much more quickly with the Art of the Fire Wheel if you know how to hit him just right to get those three damage blasts. And that is it for Act 3. So you might want to check and see if you have a drink, maybe grab some popcorn, because this is the longest series of movies and cutscenes in the entire game. Well, it doesn't look like Dr. Smith survived. Looks like somebody killed him. Hmm. Also seems that he had the light statue the entire time and wasn't telling us about that. Oh, Dr. Smith. If only you would have just given us the whole story. Well, in any case, it looks like he's concerned about this demon waking up. Alright, we gotta stop it. I mean, it's a video game, it's what we do. And I've gotta become the Ninja Dragon. Yeah, uh, thanks. Well, looks like he's gone. And conveniently timed men in black are here to pick us up. And we are on to Act 4, A Trap. Alright, well, it looks like we're in some kind of office building. Alright, well, it's the CIA, so you know that's trouble. Good. Glad he's getting to the point, but no? Okay, we want to know why they killed Smith. Well,. Maybe if he would have told us who killed him, instead of blathering on about us becoming the Ninja Dragon, that might have been a better use of his last few breaths of life. Just saying there, Walter Smith. Might have been good to reveal to us if you were killed by ninjas, or if you were taken out by the CIA. Although maybe Ryu should know. Like... Were there bullet holes in the guy, or stab wounds? Hmm. Very good question. It looks like we're going to be headed to South America. Maybe we should have figured that out? From, you know, some of the bad guys we were fighting? The one guy was known as the Executioner of South America. This guy, Guardia de Mieux, whose name we only hear one time, for the entire rest of the game, they always refer to him as the Jacquio. And the Jacquio, he's bad news. In any case, it seems like his big plan is to unite those statues and release some evil demons. Yeah, yeah, we probably need to stop him from doing that. According to this guy, it's this Jacquio fool who's responsible for our friend Walter Smith's death and possibly the death of our father as well. Yeah, or maybe this foster guy also knows how to press our buttons. He probably has a whole file on Ryu. Well, whatever this guy says were the words written on a stone tablet, I mean, we certainly have to trust him. He seems very trustworthy. Oh, 
The two statues could give someone enough power to control the world. I've never heard a plot like that before. Oh, and surprise, the woman that shot us at the bar, also working for the CIA. Yeah, you know, you maybe should have figured that if she could chase down a ninja, that she might have had some advanced training. Oh, and we're going to get paid? Yeah, I believe it. I would certainly want to have that in writing. But it looks like it's an offer we can't refuse. So we're going to be packed into the back of a small aircraft and we'll be parachuting down into South America. Yeah, it looks like it's just been one of those kind of days for Ryu. So the items are inside spiders here in Area 4. And the first spider contains a 10 Nimpo, but we want to attack it from far away so that we can grab it and immediately jump across and kill that gunner before he can shoot at us. The birds are unfortunately back, so try not to backtrack whenever you see birds. It will cause them to keep respawning. And now we have the Spin Slash, and if you're very careful, you can come down here and get a 1-up. But it's probably not worth it, to be honest. You essentially have infinite lives in this game, so it doesn't matter very much to get an extra one. Make your way across to the right. Bounce up on this platform. Over here on the left, we will be able to grab five Nimpo, so use your Slash Cancel to get it, so you don't waste the five using your Spin Slash. Make your way over to the right where we'll find a ladder and head up to the next part of the stage. This bird that attacks you as you get up here is pretty obnoxious so just try to move to the right and hopefully it will run away to the left. But as soon as you go to the edge here, we will make it to the next part, stage 4-2, the Castle Rock. Our arrival here at the Castle Rock marks the beginning of the end. All of the final stages will take place within this castle. You'll also notice that the difficulty will begin to increase again. Watch out for these sword ninjas that drop from the sky as we move forward here. There's going to be a bat that you want to just jump over as you cross this pit. So don't try to attack that bat, you'll cause them to respawn. And if we come up here, I'm going to grab a different weapon, just because if you die in this part, you wouldn't have the Spin Slash. But if you do have the Spin Slash, you probably do want to save it. But we'll use the Windmill Star and just kind of Swag Star our way through here. So if you shoot it out and then jump over it, you'll get some extra use out of each star. See how that works. See how many of them you can get. You can oftentimes dodge it a bunch of times and... Just have that star going all over the place. Now down here at the bottom is a health refill, but it's in a very awkward spot. You do not want to get knocked off the edge when you're grabbing that extra health. Watch out for the bird here. And there's the spin slash. So now that you have the spin slash, you want to keep it. Although I do believe there's a 10 Nimpo up there that I'm skipping, but I'm doing all right with 30 right now. So I'm just going to head up the ladder. And we're on to part 4-3. So I have some bad news about stage 4-3. There is no spin slash power up in here. So if you lose your spin slash, well, that's it. It's gone. Don't worry about taking out that knife thrower. You almost just want to go through him. He just keeps respawning if you try to kill him. So just try to get over him however you can. Make your way to the right and head up the ladder. Now you want to jump off to the left and then back over to the right. Now this is a windmill star right here, so if you have the spin slash, you probably just want to avoid this one. I'll let it disappear. Wait for the gunner to fire and then move on to the right. Watch out for these martial artists. Now, if you climb up here, you will be able to get a health refill if you drop down and hit this candle over right above us, that one. So don't miss that if you need some health, especially if you're still holding a spin slash. 
That is the art of the fire wheel, so we want to avoid that if we have the spin slash. Head across, take out that gunner as soon as you see him. And this thing's called a Kelbaraz statue, so uh, kill it. And head up the ladder. We're almost to the end now. So if you're holding that spin slash, keep holding it. Take out this martial artist. Just climb up these platforms and attack that masked killer and the Kelbara statue. And we've made it to the boss. Now if you have the spin slash, just jump up and attack this first boss you see right on the left. And it's that easy. But it's very possible you could have lost the spin slash, so let's talk about how to beat this boss without it. So the first thing we want to do is jump up and attack this left one three or four times before it gets moving. We can only damage the one that started on the left. Now this boss is known as the Kelbaras, and you will notice that if you stand right in front of the base of these two platforms, you are about 90 to 95% safe from their attacks, although they do occasionally bounce into that space, but it's rare. So that's all you really need to do. Hang out in front of the base of these statues and make sure you track which one you can damage because when you attack the other one, it doesn't deal damage at all. So if you notice you're attacking the Kelbaras and it's not taking damage, that means you need to start fighting the other one. And that's it. We've completed Act 4. Well, it seems that we've come face to face with the Jacquio. Yeah, we're not just going to give him the statue. Nice try, Jacquio. Well, unfortunately, he has a hostage. Yeah. Sadly, Irene's character was actually pretty cool at the beginning. She was pretty tough, but now she is a simple female hostage for us to rescue. Unfortunately, going back to those kind of tropes that many old video games fall into. Save the princess. Well, looks like we had to give up the demon statue and we'll just let this guy take over the world and yeah, of course he has a trap door. Why wouldn't he have a trap door? He's a crazy monster guy. And it looks like Irene's going to be sacrificed. Everything seems to be going wrong. And it seems tonight is the night that only comes once every 700 years. Very coincidental. And we are on to Act 5, which is called Life or Death Combat. Act 5 is no joke. Make sure to jump over the bat here as you cross this pit. You don't want to attack the bat because it will just respawn. That enemy I just took out was called a Jacko Killer, and this guy's called a Greeper. He reminds me of the hunchback enemies from Castlevania. Take out these sword mans and duck to avoid the bird. And the sword ninjas will rain down. Take out another Jacko murderer. And up here we're going to be able to grab the art of the fire wheel. And then I'm just going to kind of jump back and forth while holding up to climb the left side of this pillar. That's the easiest way to get past this guillotine man. I use the art of the fire wheel to take out those guys and continue to the right. Gotta be careful of this bird. And I can use my fire wheel here as well to take out this Jacko murderer. And as I head back to the right, I want to get over that bat. Jump across here. This is some health, so if you're low on health, you definitely want to grab that. It's a pretty easy health to get, and we can use that same trick to climb up that wall. And then this is the door to 5-2, so you just want to get through. So 5-2 has some tricky platforming. It's okay if you die in this part, it's not like you're holding on to the spin slash or anything, and it would refill your health if you were low on health. Make sure to grab any of these ninpos that you see as you move forward here. I still have the fire wheel so I can take that guy out, but here is the spin slash. Make sure to take out this creeper before you head up the ladder. And now that we have the spin slash, we can use it to our advantage here. 
Make your way across to the right. A lot of sword ninjas. Just try to avoid them. Wait for this guy to jump and then attack him. Same thing with this one. Use the slash cancel to get that Nimpo. And then we're just going to wait for these Kelbara statues to fire and then we're going to jump up. If you need to, use your spin slash. And we can grab five Nimpo before we climb up the ladder again. Make your way back to the right. Take out this martial artist. And there's going to be a health icon up here. So grab that to refill your health. Watch out for the masked killer. You want to take him out. Now this part's tricky here. You just want to kind of walk off to the right, then bounce over to the left, bounce back to the right again, and then bounce back over to the right, and that should get you down there. That part's tricky. Watch out for the bird. I used the spin slash to take him out in the air there. If you don't have the spin slash, you're going to have to strike him with your weapon. So I have bad news again about stage 5-3. The spin slash makes it a lot easier to get through here, but there is no spin slash to be found in the entirety of this section. So the only way to have spin slash here is to have brought it from stage 5-2. Up here is one of those spots where you'd really wish to have it. Watch out for these jetpack ninjas. Make sure that you clear any of them that are on the screen before you jump over across the pits. Up here, You'll want to avoid a bat as you cross this pit, and another bat, and there's going to be a tiger on the other side that you need to immediately jump over. Now that candle right above me there, that is an invincibility fire wheel. So if you don't have spin slash, you may want to grab that and just try to charge through this section and get up to the next platform. Now if you have spin slash, that part's pretty easy. It's hard to avoid that gunner, so you may just want to jump when he's at the edge of the platform and try to bounce off of his head and to the right. Once you get up to this part, this part is fairly easy compared to the other parts of 5-3. Just stay on the top level here, take out these sword guys, and we are here at the boss, Bloody Malf. Get ready for the epic battle with Bloody Moth. He's the leader of the Malice Four. He's known as the Boss of Bosses, a North European legend that has been passed down from generation to generation about a cursed man with the Iron Mask of Blood and the Shield of Death. When he was young, he studied Eastern philosophy and became interested in Japanese martial arts. Now he seems to be invincible with the secret fighting techniques of the Orient. Yeah, this guy talks big game, but he is no match for the Spin Slash. Now, what if you don't have the Spin Slash? It's not in stage 5-3, so there's a good chance you won't have it. The thing about Bloody Moth is they refill your health the first time you fight him, so if you just crouch down and attack him in his legs at sword's length, you should be able to easily defeat him. Just make sure to mash the button very quickly and don't let him run into you with his body. But it's really similar to fighting the first boss of the game. And that's it. Now at this point, it gets a little bit like Star Wars. Yeah, it was kind of Indiana Jones before, but now it seems that our father is alive. And it is our destiny that we'll have to fight him. You know, assuming that we believe whatever Bloody Malth is saying. But, uh, yeah, spoiler alert, we will have to fight the father later. And with that, we are on to Act 6, the final act. Act 6 is known as a battle to the finish, and that is an accurate way of describing it. If you're playing this on an original Nintendo, the best way to beat this game is to make sure that you just have an hour to set aside so that you can use it just on Act 6. Try to get good at the first five acts so you can just run through them quickly and then put in the time to becoming a master of this final act. As you head to the left here, you'll notice that 6-1 is actually not that tough and you'll grab your first spin slash. Now there's a spin slash in 6-2 and 6-3, so it's not very important to save this one. Just try to get to the end, and if you have a bunch of damage when you're at the beginning of 6-2, it's probably worth taking a quick death just to refill your health. 
Jump over this dog as you move to the left, and there's another one here. Grab this five Nimpo. Watch out for the Mace Man as you climb up here. Take him out. And you want to go down to the bottom here, grab this ten Nimpo, and then climb this wall. Just keep jumping off of it and moving up. That way you'll prevent the dog from respawning. If you don't, you'll almost definitely get hit by that guy. Now this part's very tricky if you don't already have the Spin Slash. Jump over to that platform, take out these Jetpack Ninjas, and then there's the Spin Slash right there. Once you get it, use it. Use it here, but don't hit that candle. That is a Windmill Star, and you don't want that right now. There's a 5 Nimpo at the end. Grab it and head up the ladder. Now over here we want to spin slash this gunner and then just walk off the platform to the left. You'll bounce off that bird and then you'll be in a good position to attack it. Make sure to attack these two Kelbara statues as soon as they appear on screen so just run right at them and fight them. And don't grab that candle if you have the spin slash. That is a shuriken that you don't want to grab right now. Go up this stairway and when you get to the top this is a very difficult room. Attack this sword man from across the way. Grab these Nimpos, jump over the soldier. As you advance, the screen slowly to the right. Take out that bird. And we can despawn this Banshee by just kind of walking it to the edge of the screen until it disappears. Be careful of the bird again as you move across to the right. Very tough room. There's a bird here. Be careful of him. And this Creeper. Now that candle above us there is a health refill. It's not super important though because we're almost to 6-3 and we can just take a death at the beginning of 6-3 and that'll refill our health. I grabbed the invincibility fire wheel here because we're just going to grab a new spin slash as soon as we get into 6-3. If you have low health, take an intentional death now. We're about to grab the very last spin slash in the game, and we want to have full health when we do. Run right up to that gunner, don't let him shoot off a shot, and then head back and climb up this pillar. Take out this Kelbara statue, and climb up the ladder. Now when we get to the top here, we're going to go all the way to the wall, and head back to the right and climb this ladder. Now we're going to jump across, jump right over this creeper, don't do any of these candles, jump over these enemies, that candle's a fire wheel, you definitely want to avoid it. Attack this guy, use the spin slash on the bird if you have to. You need to take those birds out, they're very aggressive. And jump across and use the spin slash to kill this jacko killer. And grab this time freezer. Now you can grab five Nimpo here, but it's more important to just head across very quickly. While well, the time freeze is going on, it will prevent enemies from spawning, and there's some nasty enemies there that you'd really like to prevent spawning. Be careful that you don't move too far to the left, you'll trigger a bird. You need to jump to the top of this platform, you do not want to catch the side of it. You'll get hit by the bird for sure. So this is the final room before the final boss. Grab this health, but then head back to the left. You want to jump and spin slash that candle, it's a time freeze item and quickly climb to the top here to prevent some enemies from spawning. Then you can despawn that masked killer at the bottom. And if you have a bit of health, just hurry to the right and get through that door. You don't want to hit any of those candles there. Those are all different sub weapons. So if you're holding the spin slash already, you don't want to get anything else. They're going to give us a full bar of health the first time we fight this final boss. And you'll actually get a full bar the first time you fight each of the three final bosses. So you'll have a good chance to beat them each time. Now if you die, you get sent all the way back to 6-1. So if you die and you have to come back, they also won't refill your health. So I highly recommend that you make sure you bring the spin slash with you. If you get to that final door and you don't have the spin slash, it might be better for you to just die, lose all your lives and continue. Start 6-3 over from the beginning. Grab the spin slash and try to bring it to the end. So just keep trying to do that until you can. With that, we're going to fight the first of the three bosses. So this one is the Masked Devil and he is actually our father. 
Obviously, we will be able to destroy him easily with the Spin Slash. We're going to attack that red orb that you can see on the screen. But I will also show you the strategy for beating him without the Spin Slash, of course. Here it is with the Spin Slash. And very easy. But if you don't have it, the way to beat him is not that difficult. You can beat this first boss for sure. So right out of the gate, you want to run up there, jump up, and try to get some early hits on the orb before it gets going. Then head back and climb as high up on the left wall as you can. Those fireballs won't be able to hit you. When it gets all the way to the wall, jump over them and try to time it so you get between the fireballs that are coming out of the orb. And you can try to get a couple of shots at them from the right platform. But then do the same thing, climb all the way up as high as you can, jump over them, and then you can get a bunch of shots from this side. And then climb up the left wall, all the way up, wait for them to come all the way over, give them some time for that. Alright, and jump, and you want to time that jump to go between the fireballs coming out of the orb, and make sure you're attacking him from the right, you don't want to attack him from the left there, you'll get caught in the crossfire. And we're going to jump over again, and we're going to attack him from the center pillar. Bam, and that's it. You've defeated the Masked Devil. He is the first of the three final bosses. Now, if you were to die on the second boss, which he's the Jacquio, the most difficult boss in the entire game, probably. If you die on him, you don't have to fight the Masked Devil again. So that's the good news. You'll get sent back to 6-1, but you could potentially take the Spin Slash in 6-3 and bring it with you for your second fight with Jacquio. But the first time that we fight him here, we are going to have our full health bar. So I'm going to show you not one, but two different strategies you can use for beating him with just your regular sword. So see if one of these will work for you. So right out of the gate, run between the last two platforms on the right and dodge his fireball, then jump up on the center platform and hit him. Then you're going to want to dodge a fireball and hit him from the right platform. But basically what you want to do is you want to be on the ground floor whenever the fireballs are being launched. If you're down there, they will continue off the bottom of the screen and you can move to avoid them. They will try to home in on you though, which is tough. What you want to do is try to time your jumps so that you can jump to one of the platforms and attack him right before or right as he is shooting the fireballs. And you want to hit that like six pointed star right in the middle of him. That's the sweet spot to attack. Be very careful not to come into contact with the boss himself. That deals you three points of damage while the fireballs only deal you one. And you're just kind of looking for your opening to get a good shot in at him. Be very careful. See, now if you're up on the platforms when he shoots the, the fireballs, they will stay up and float around and attack you, so that's tough. Alright, so that's the first way you can use to beat them. Now, the second way starts out similar to the previous one. I like to get a few cheap hits on them early on in the fight. But the strategy here is we're going to try to climb up this wall whenever he's floating to the left. And if you go high enough up on the wall, Whenever he launches the fireballs, they won't be able to reach you. And as he comes over to the right, we can jump off of the wall and try to hit him in midair there. Hopefully jumping over some fireballs. So you want to try to time it so you get some good shots in. I kind of think that this way is a little bit easier than the other method. It's easier to explain for sure. I'm not sure if it's actually better. It's certainly not faster. But either way, try to use this method if you don't think that that other just hanging out on the bottom pattern is going to work for you. Although whenever you're not on the wall, make sure you're in the bottom. You'd never want to be caught standing on those platforms. That's how you get the fireballs that just float around and troll you. Now remember, if you do die on this guy, you'll go back to 6-1 but you can come back and bring with you the Spin Slash, and that's what this looks like. That simple. So 
so if you die, it's not that big of a deal. Just make sure you bring the spin slash whenever you come back. So you've beaten Jacquio. Pat yourself on the back. Most gamers do not get this far. But we all know the truth. There are three final bosses, and we've only killed two of them. That means we still have to fight the last one. And this guy is quite tough. He is a demon named Joshin. Whenever we fight Joshin, the first thing we have to do is destroy his face. So we're going to jump and attack the face, and you want to try to get two attacks on his face in midair each time if you can. To at least get one. You need to get ten hits on the face, and then it comes off, and you can't avoid it, so you're going to take a bit of damage there. Then there's a tail section we need to fight, so we're going to hit that 16 times, and finally we can hit the heart 16 times to finish it off. The whole time we need to avoid these shrimp things that come shooting out. So try to be mindful of them and jump and get your attacks in whenever there aren't a lot of shrimp on the screen. So jump, there's the head. 16 hits on the tail. Try to get close to it and mash, but don't get stuck mashing so that you can't avoid the shrimp when you see one coming towards you. Just let go, stop hitting the button and move. The shrimp do you a lot of damage and we still have to fight the heart, so we don't want to take a ton of damage up till this point. Alright, now we got it. We can get in close and you want to try to get two hits each time you jump and attack the heart. You also want to get kind of close to it as well. I've noticed that that seems to be a little bit safer from the shrimp. So get in there. Hit, hit. 16 shots is all it takes. And... Joshin will be no more. Now, of course, if you die on this guy, you don't have to fight Jacquio again. So you can come back here and bring the spin slash, and this is what that looks like. Bam, head is gone. We don't have to worry about the tail. And that's it. We've defeated the final boss and completed Ninja Gaiden. All we can do now is sit back, relax, and enjoy the cheesy ending. Oh, and it's a very cheesy one this time. Now, of course, this final battle took place on this castle rock, and by the official rules of Nintendo, if the final battle takes place in a castle, that castle has to explode. So that is going to happen. Well, it's good to know that we're a man now. And it seems that our father is about to die. Yeah, we kind of saw that coming. Very Star Wars. And here it is. The castle rock explodes. It's kind of a funny explosion. It looks like parts of it are falling off the sides. But actually... After it's all said and done, the thing looks exactly the same as it did before. Yep, big chunk falling off. Oh, another piece of it slides out from behind. But yeah, nothing changed on this thing. It's like all of the explosion somehow happened on the back side of the mountain or whatever. Still, it looks cool. And of course we get the girl at the end. But wait, hold on. Her cell phone's going off. Sea Swallow. Interesting code name. I do think it would have been much cooler at the end if right after this cutscene we had to fight Irene as like the true fourth final boss. That would have been really intense. No one would have seen that coming. Oh, and then maybe we could have fought Foster too. That would have been sweet. I don't know, maybe three final bosses is enough. Well, we get two forms of payment, eh?
and we threw her cell phone away. Not cool, man. Oh, very macho. Oh man, she's into it. Yeah, I don't know if that would happen in real life. Now, Irene will be a very important character in the next two games. So if you play Ninja Gaiden 2 or 3, you'll certainly need to know who Irene is. And that's it. That's the end of the game. Enjoy that sunrise. Well, I hope this video was able to help you defeat the three final bosses and finally complete one of the most difficult video games ever made. If it did, make sure to give it a like and make sure to subscribe for more videos because there will always be more difficult final bosses to fight and that's why we'll be back again next week with another video game you can beat. Thanks for watching.